Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixman. Hanging out today with Zachary Knighton. The Pale Door coming out August 21st. Zach, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's a, it's a weird time. A lot of stuff going on in the world, but just trying to make it through. I think that's all we can ask for at this point. No doubt. So why don't we talk about your new movie? We, uh, I was reading the description, and I got to tell you, I've, I've read a lot of descriptions for movies. This one is in a separate category all by itself. What was it like doing this and being in the movie? Uh, you know, I've always had uh, this dream to be in a Western, and I've always pushed my agents and, and my manager to find, find me this Western. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know where it is, and I've always been, you know, searching for it. And my career is sort of taking me down a comedy path and it's kind of hard to get taken seriously to do anything like, like that, you know? So uh, I know Aaron Coons, the director, was um, a fan of Happy Endings and he also is a fan on, of, uh, you know, turning certain stereotypes on their head a little. So his thought of having a comedy guy in a horror film, I think, uh, uh, you know, was pretty appealing to him and the producers of the movie. So they sent me the script and when I read it, I just loved it. And it was kind of a dream come true. So what's it about Westerns then? When did you really start to get an interest in them? I mean, I, I just, you know, I've always loved Westerns. I, I love the old spaghetti Westerns. And um, I grew up with my dad putting on John Wayne movies and watching Bonanza, and, uh, you know, the Rifleman. I still put on The Rifleman on Saturday mornings and I'm having my coffee. And it's just something that I've always loved. And, and, uh, and I've also loved horror films. I've done a couple of horror films and, and I just think that this thing really mixes the genres really well. Yeah, you mentioned the fact that you get this intersection of horror and the Western. What was most fascinating of just kind of playing in that world for a little while? Well, you know, uh, I've always loved From Dust Till Dawn. That's one of my favorite kind of I guess it's sort of a genre film horror I don't know whatever Tarantino whatever you want to call that movie it sort of blends a lot of genres as well and I mean I to me I just thought oh yeah it makes so much sense a gang of outlaws witches a, ta a weird ghost town like it all it all works and also I was just coming off a, a season of uh, Magnum P.I. and living in Hawaii all year and and the thought of going out and riding horses in Oklahoma and doing something completely the opposite of what I've been doing for the year was pretty appealing. Yeah, I mean, the whole Hawaii situation must be incredible, but even just to pop over and do a movie and be in Oklahoma, like that must be a nice change of pace. So what do you remember that, about that point? Because I saw you post on social media, like a tornado was going on at the time. Like it must have been a pretty wild experience for you. Yeah, you know, there was a tornado. It was high tornado season last summer. Uh, we didn't have a pandemic last summer, but we had a bunch of tornadoes. So, you know, it seems like 2019 and 2020 just keep keep giving. But um, uh, we did have some tornadoes. Um, uh, we had to shut down shooting several times because of storms. And uh, if you saw that post on Instagram, that was uh, when a tornado actually was hitting the hotel and we had to go down to the shelters. So that was a new experience for me. Here we don't have... We don't have shelters here in Hawaii. We have, uh, I mean, we don't have tornadoes. We have hurricanes. We almost got hit just a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, I, I guess there's nowhere is safe anymore. Yeah, we're just all screwed at this point <laughs> with everything going on in the world. And we need stuff like this to watch to kind of take our minds off it too. So I think the beauty of this is that, you know, people check it out on demand, it's streaming. What's well, it been like for you to just see the changes in the industry? Because even when you first started, like TV looks a lot different and so too do movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, television and film are starting to reflect the landscape of the people that, that watch those things, you know, that watch content. I mean, obviously, we've had a, a much needed diversity push in TV and film, and that's been incredible to witness and, um, and to be a part of. And, uh, you know, for me, I mean, I guess with this COVID thing too. I usually try to do uh, a movie or something between seasons of a TV show. Magnum, the shooting schedule is pretty demanding and, and long. It's about a nine month to 10 month shooting schedule. So um, to be able to squeeze in this movie and shoot with uh, the good folks over there at Paper Street Pictures and Aaron Koontz was, was I I'm really fortunate. And and especially now, this year, I didn't get to do that at all, obviously. Everything's been shut down. So I'm really thankful that I got that experience with those guys. 
Yeah, it's experiences like that that are a little bit more important in a year like this because you can't actually do it. And who knows the next time you'll be able to shoot a movie like this. I know. I mean, just getting started on shooting Magnum has been, you know, we're, we're getting through all the protocols. We're supposed to start in a couple of weeks. I, I hope that's going to be the case because I know uh, we want to get back to work and the, the crew really wants to get back. To, I know in, in general, the industry, everybody wants to get back to work. No doubt about it. So why don't we talk about Magnum PI? It's obviously a show that people knew from the past and this iteration has been great with you and with Jay Hernandez and everybody else. What's been the biggest joy in doing this so far? Uh, well, I was a huge fan of the original and um, I grew up, uh, you know, surfing and sailing and um, I, I'm a diver. I, I love the outdoor uh, aspects of uh, a tropical climate so <laughs> of course the the appeal of moving to hawaii was um was great uh but uh you know i i just i i love this show i love the original and larry minetti who was the original rick uh i was a big fan of his even from pre-magnum days baba black sheep and all these classic things that he did and uh uh, it just felt like a, a choice that made sense. I sort of gone down this road of a lot of different pilots and things I was doing since Happy Endings got canceled. And um, this felt like a sure thing. This felt like something that would stay on the air for a while. And I love the team involved. And, and it's been a blast. We were, you know, we've been really fortunate that people love the show and embraced it. And we've sort of become our own thing other than a remake, you know. What was most important to you in terms of putting your own stamp on Rick? Well, uh, you know, I think everybody sort of felt that we weren't going to try and replicate what they did in the original. And uh, to me, I just think, uh, you know, I just wanted to be loose and free and fun. And they really let me kind of do whatever I want. I mean, I get to do a lot of improv and bring stuff that I did in Happy Endings over to Magnum, which is cool. And 